Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be adding some fish and shrimp to my aquascape. These guys are going to be the cleanup crew for our planted tank. I've gone for Otto Sinkless catfish and also cherry shrimp. With these guys in the aquarium, they should hopefully eat any excess algae that may grow in the tank. So right now in the footage, you can see I've got some Otto Sinkless catfish that I've just brought from our local fish shop. Their colors are a little bit muty right now, but that's just because they're a little bit stressed out. Once they become acclimated, they'll get their color back and look a lot more happier. Whenever I add new fish or shrimp to my aquariums, I like to use the drip acclimation method. This method will allow your fish and shrimp to get slowly used to the new water conditions they'll be living in. I'm using an airline tube with a valve attachment at the end. The valve has been set to release about one drip of water per second into the bucket. I'll leave the airline tube to drip water for about three hours. After about three hours, the volume of water in the bucket should have doubled and the fish and shrimp should be fully acclimated to the new water conditions they'll be living in. I made a video about this, so if you want to check it out, I'll leave a card in the top right hand corner of this video. In this bucket here, we've got my colony of cherry shrimp that I've been keeping for the past two or three years now. It's a little bit hard to see in this black bucket, but there's about 50 cherry shrimp here. Again, for these guys, I'm going to use a drip acclimation method just to get them slowly used to the new water conditions they're going to be living in. Having shrimp in a planted tank is always very beneficial. They'll eat away at algae and any dead leaves that are in your aquarium. This is why they're so commonly used in a cleaner crew. Shrimps are also really good if you're growing moss in your aquarium. The shrimps will pick out any excess debris and detritus that might be stuck in the moss. If you have excess debris and detritus in your moss, it may lead to algae growth. As the debris and detritus start to break down in the moss, it will release excess nutrients. And this is what's going to cause the algae growth. And the most likely type of algae you're going to get is thread algae. Thread algae can be a little bit difficult to clean up and remove, so we've got to try and avoid this as best we can. The cherry shrimp are now fully acclimated after about three hours. I transfer them into a jug just to make it a little bit easier to put them all in the aquarium at once. And now I'm going to add the Otto Sinkless catfish to my aquarium. These guys are going to be really shy, but hopefully after a few hours I'll start to settle into their new home. You can see the cherry shrimp are now starting to colour up really well. There's a little bit of algae and bile from growing in the aquarium, so they're going to be happy grazing on that. I'm hoping in a few months time the colony of cherry shrimp will grow and the population will increase. These guys are always interesting to watch and just add another element to your aquarium. If you're not keeping shrimp in your aquarium, I highly recommend you get some, it's really worth it. They are super easy to keep and not very demanding at all. You can see here the Otto Sinkers catfish has coloured up really nicely now. These catfish grow up to about 5 cm in length, which makes them perfect for a nano aquarium. They're probably one of the best algae eaters you can get for your aquarium. Throughout the day and night they'll graze around the surface of your aquarium just eating all the algae that's growing on it. They are more active at night and more when the aquarium lights are off, so try and have a look at them at this time. I also found them to be a schooling fish, so try and keep them in a group of four as a minimum. This will keep them happy and less stressed out in your aquarium and you'll see some really interesting behaviour too. A little note I thought I'd mention is that sometimes these guys don't come into your local fish shop very well, so try and pick out the healthy ones if you can. Usually the wild caught ones are starved, so they haven't really eaten much during the transportation process to your local fish shop. So when you get them, just check they're eating in your aquarium and then have a nice rounded belly. A good food to feed them other than algae is with pashi soil and green. This is a really good algae based food, which I'll feed to loads of my fish. So if you guys all enjoyed this video, the next video I'm planning is adding the new main fish for this aquascape. As you guys can probably guess, it's going to be some chili raspberries, so stay tuned for that video. And just before I go, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more updates from this game.